Hi folks, welcome back to Heard on the X, the East Coast premier music talk show. Uh, maybe they should do a version of Killing in the Name of. I was thinking the same thing. That would be really cool. Like a, a three-part a... harmony of Killing in the Name of. <laughs> how would how does how does someone get a hold of the band if they want to book the band, guys? Well, we have a Facebook page. You got that, Mark? You want to give it to him? Yes. E l i e l i w n y for Western New York. So it's e l i w n y at yahoo.com. That's our Facebook page, and uh, you can contact us. Uh, we have contact information on there. Wait, that's an uh, email address, though. Is, is the Facebook the same? Facebook. Same. Same. Facebook. Same. Facebook. Eli WNY <laughs> Facebook. Yeah, so. And before we go any further, the website to get tickets for that opening night at uh, the forum, it's theforumbuffalo.com. Forum is spelled F O R V M. So, yeah. V M? Yeah. That's pretty v- strange. Yeah. That's old Latin. <laughs> yeah. So it's T H E. It's T H E F O R V M. B U F F A L O dot com, and then you can get your tickets there. There you go, thank you. And realistically, you know, you're looking at maybe three, four times through the summer, five times through the summer to see this. So, shows are going to be important shows. I mean, it, it, if people want to see it, they should get out and see it. Yes, this okay. isn't intended to be a bar band. It's intended to be more of a show type atmosphere. Right. For the baby boomers, people who grew up with Corey and the local Three Dog Night songs, they had the most number of top 40 hits between 1969 and 75, so they got a big base market, especially being here with Corey Wells. So we're going to do a couple of especially large shows, outdoor functions or large concerts. Yeah, yeah, we were ta- you and I were talking about that, and, and we, you can skew any numbers. I mean, you re- anybody can. You can skew numbers to make, I mean, the government does it all the time, to be honest with you. But um, you and I had said, what an important number that is. It's almost impossible to skew that one, because their contemporaries from 69 to 75, you still have the Beatles... You know, in existence, you have the Rolling Stones probably in their most musical part. Like you had mentioned, Zeppelin's still around. Um, the the Who's in their heyday. Uh, you know, Black Sabbath in, in their heyday. You're talking about probably the stiffest competition for any band to be playing at any time, and these guys come up. Not to mention all the pop stuff that was out at that time. You know, I mean, there was, you know, the. the well, 69 to 75, yes, yeah, so you're the Partridge family, you know, selling stuff. You know, the, the Archies, I mean, the monkeys. the monkeys, yeah. I mean, all of them selling massive pop records. So you had both ends of the spectrum really completely covered. So that, it's an important, important bit. And we did try to reach out to Corey to get him to come on. We're going to reach out to Corey and get you guys back on um, when he's when he's able to come on with us. Uh, his interview was great, too. I mean, did, do you any of you remember him? From- I, I, heard your, I heard the interview. I saw it online. Did you, do you remember him from Buffalo, when he was back in Buffalo? You kidding? Yeah, sure. I mean, I, grew, I mean, my, believe it or not, a uh, real quick funny story is when I got involved in being a singer, I was in the seventh grade uh, back in Niagara Falls at Prince School, and I had a, a band, my first band, uh, just guitar, drums, and me, and we did the end of the school assembly, and I sang Joy to the World by Three Dog Night. So I've come in full circle over 40 years. Hey, Rich, one of my goals is to try to get Corey out to a show. We've got friends of friends who know him. Yeah. Also our very own Rick Ryan from Weekend. He's also played with Corey at a show at the Hall of Fame induction. And they got a lot of duct, duct tape and rope. So if he doesn't voluntarily go, we're going to get <laughs> No, I think, you know what, he seemed like such a cool guy. Yeah. And he spends, he still spends his summers here, like down in Dunkirk or something. So he, I, I, I'll bet you he would do it. I really, I think. I'll tell you, he's the sweetest, sweetest, nicest guy I've ever met in my life. He's just a wonderful guy. And I, when I met him, I felt like I was in the presence of an angel. Yeah. And this guy, <laughs> the funniest thing was, he was playing the Adobe Royal song. And he always said I wanted to do that song. And I said, you should do it. It's a great song. And it turns out Uncle Cracker came out with it like six months That's right. later. That's I right. I wonder what he thought about that. Yeah, yeah. But he was just the warmest, nicest guy. And when they played in Lockport um, last summer, I had a chance to meet him again. And you couldn't get, the security wouldn't let you anywhere near them. But I just mentioned them that I had worked with them before, and they brought me right in. And he and Jimmy Greenspoon, they treated me like I was family. Really? Yeah. Wonderful he Wonderful people. Interviewing him was a riot because you know we we had originally planned on doing maybe fifteen minutes or something, and, yeah. and we just couldn't shut him up. He wanted to talk about he wanted to talk about Buffalo back in the old days, leaving Buffalo. Yeah, I heard that. So, so it's almost segmented out. I mean, he he just really still has a lot of love for this area. He talks about when you went to the West Coast 
uh, late 60s, early 70s, uh, even early 60s. Um, sure, you, you mentioned Stan in the Raven. Yeah, if you came from Buffalo, you kind of had a leg up. And Jimmy Anger kind of said the same thing. If you came from Buffalo, people knew that you came from an area where you know where there's some serious players. And oh. uh, it was it was just great hearing him hearing him talk about everything under the sun. He was just fantastic. Oh, he's a real Buffalo guy. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Billy Sheehan was that way too. When we interviewed Billy Sheehan, I thought for sure he's going to want to talk about Mr. Big, and uh, he wanted to talk about the transit drive-in. He wanted to talk yeah. about that's what he. Wanted to talk about it was rooftop uh, skyroom. Some great memories with Billy too. Yeah, I mean he was. It, it's yeah. it's just so much. It's so cool that these guys. I guess they're like all of us, right? You just want to whatever your glory days are in your head. You know they are, and they sure. seem to be your youth more than anything. Robbie you know? Take Act too. Yeah. What a Buffalo guy he is, huh? Absolutely. And he sounds like uh, Reagan from The Exorcist. <laughs> <laughs> we we <laughs> had a com we had a commercial that he did for the Music Is Our campaign yeah, one year, great. and it was there was no backing track. It, it, he sent it to us, and it was just him talking. But I mean, anybody that knows Robbie, he's got that deep yeah. voice. Hi, it's Robbie. Yeah, he he's like, hi, it's Robbie. <laughs> from the Google house. But so we would run it, and then right after that, we come out of the commercial break and run clips from The Exorcist. Yeah, we'd run Reagan from The yeah, Exorcist. Yeah, we just sound the it's same. A beautiful day for an exorcism. <laughs> 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 they sound exactly the same. Richard, you had a good point there. You talked about people promoting Buffalo music. I, I, you know, I'm originally from New York City, like Chuck Negron was. Right. You can see such a big difference from musicians, and not just musicians, but the people who go see the musicians here. It's a very, very loyal community. They follow you. They enjoy you. They'll, they'll follow you around. And even the musicians will even come back and say great things about Buffalo. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it, even, like you say, touring guys that play here, they just, they just dig Buffalo. And every Buffalo musician... I, I, I can honestly say I love all the Buffalo musicians. I've always loved all, with the exception of Mike Hunt, because he scares me. Yeah, he's, he's <laughs> you know? very scary. It really. And Dylan, know? his son Dylan is I love to Dylan. the point where Dylan's scaring me. Dylan I, doesn't scare me, but Michael definitely is. No, I mean, everybody. everybody I, love, I, they're, I just think the community, it's a great musical community. I'm so happy that in the last, uh, seems like five or six years, a lot of the walls that were up, isolating bands from each other, even the project that you're doing, incorporating multiple bands playing together, I like seeing that because I think that's just going to strengthen the musical community and strengthen, you know, the people that go out and see shows because uh, somebody somebody who goes and sees Hit and Run, um, you know, comes out and sees this band, they might say, hey, we're going to stop and see, you know, what are your bands? You know, I mean, just great, you know. But of course, you won't lose any people. You'll still have 90,000 people at a gig, Mark. Don't worry. <laughs> you do. I mean, your band is just the, the, the Beer Tent Tour, which I still love. In the summer. I absolutely love that. I appreciate that. But you hit the nail on the head, too, though. The, the better all the bands do, the better the clubs do, and the more opportunities there is to play, and more money there is to play, because it strengthens the whole, the, the whole community financially. And something that I've said for years is, New Orleans was known as a music city long before they won a Super Bowl. They were a pathetic sports team, and uh, before they sports town. His knees out, <laughs> and then, and then, and, but they were always known as a music city. I wish Buffalo would embrace, you know, their the the musical roots and the musical heritage from this city. I can't believe how many people don't know that Rick James is from Buffalo. And you'll go places, and it's like you know, or Corey Wells, or you know, there's the list goes on and on of people that are from Buffalo that they have no idea, none, none whatsoever, you know. So that's it's, it's very interesting, but I, I'm. I'm I'm proud of you guys. I'm so happy for you guys. We're definitely going to be at the first show. Uh, and we've got a list of people that got their email addresses for you, too, so you can add them to email lists and, and get them out there. You guys are going to play a full song for us right now, right? Okay. And then we're going to take a commercial break. We're going to come back with Nils Lofgren on the other side. I want to thank Eli. Thank you, guys. God bless you all. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, really, really an honor to have you all in here. And I'm so sorry that we didn't pay the electric bill and could turn the air conditioning on in there. But we'll do that next week. So <laughs> we'll take care of it next time you're in. Um, they're going to play us out. Uh, one more Three Dog Night tune from Eli. Don't forget, folks, June 1st at the Forum. Theforum.com it is, Joshua? It is theforumbuffalo.com. The Forum Buffalo. The, the U in Forum is a V. And you want to get your tickets. June 1st, 8 p.m. We are going to be there. Everybody's going to be there. It's going to be a limited amount of times that you can see this band, and I guarantee you that it's going to be worth it. I guarantee it. I mean, the level of talent in this band just is going to make it worth it. So I hope everybody that's listening gets their tickets and goes to the show. Take it away, guys. Wash away my troubles, wash away my pain. Let the rain shine the light. Wash away my sorrows, wash away my shame. Let the rain shine by the light.
Yeah. 